What's happening guys, it's Shane here. And in today's video, we are going to be ranking the top 10 degrees. And we're not just talking about bachelor's degrees here. We are talking about all different types. So all the way from associate to bachelor's to master's to doctorate and professional degrees. We're gonna be going over all of them, comparing them, and then I'm gonna be telling you which ones I think are the best. Now, it's very difficult to compare something like an associate's degree with a doctorate, right? It's almost like comparing apples to oranges. So on some level, you do have to take this with a grain of salt. But with that being said, I'm gonna try to compare them purely from a financial perspective. We're gonna be focusing on your return on investment. And return on investment is gonna be calculated by how much you put in, in terms of time, money, and effort versus how much you are going to be getting out of that from a financial perspective. So with that being said, I think you're gonna get a lot out of this video. Um, make a prediction in your head right now. Which ones do you think are going to rank the highest? Is it gonna be a lot of associate's degrees, bachelor's, master's, doctorates, professional degrees? Which ones do you think are going to dominate this list? So let's jump right into it now after you gently tap that like button. Um, let's say the goal for this video is gonna be 2,500 likes. Also hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell. Only about 20% of you that watch my videos on a regular basis are subscribed. The rest of you are just lurkers, come on now. And then out of the 20% that are subscribed, I think only a little bit less than 10% uh, actually hit the notification bell. So definitely do that, it helps the channel out a lot. So coming in at number 10 on the list, we're gonna be talking about mechanical engineering. Now, this is an engineering degree and engineering degrees in general are very good, but the reason I included this one on the list is it's probably the most flexible out of all the different engineering majors. All right, super loud motorcycle just drove by while I'm trying to record this, cool. Anyways, this one does have about 32,000 graduates per year, so it's a very common degree. And because of that, it kind of has like a brand name reputation among people who make the decisions when it comes to hiring people. And this would be, of course, recruiters, hiring managers, bosses, etc. And what I mean by that brand name reputation is a lot of the time, you know, whether you're talking to a recruiter, a hiring manager, or a boss, they have worked with people who are mechanical engineers before. So they kind of know what they're getting and human brain, human psychology just has this bias towards things that you are familiar with. You would rather kind of stick with something that you are familiar with, it's, it's called loss aversion, than try to get something that is a little bit different but could possibly be better. So basically human beings are more afraid of losing $100 than gaining $100. And the same type of psychology works when it comes to brand awareness. People would rather go to the same restaurant where they know exactly what they're gonna get then try out a new restaurant in many cases, even though the new restaurant might very well be much better than the one that they've been going to. So yeah, with this one, you're gonna start off about $66,000 a year and mid-career pay is 110,000. So the salary is pretty good right off the bat, doesn't like pop off the page compared to some of them you're gonna see on this list, but it's very good. And by the way, I am sharing these statistics directly off of my college degree ranker version 2.0, which you can access in my College 101 course, and I do have a discount for a limited amount of time. It's probably only gonna be for the rest of this month, and then the price is gonna go up, and that is down in the description below. So when it comes to the demand score, it's actually 105 out of 100, so very, very good when it comes to demand. Pretty much all the ones on this list are going to be very good you know, off the charts in, when it comes to demand. Now, one thing I will mention about this list, uh, this is something I did include in past years, and I decided to take it out just because it's a little bit confusing, and that is difficulty. Difficulty is something that I did include in past year's lists, because let's be real, you know, there's some majors where they have a dropout rate of well over 50%, because it's so hard. Engineering majors, you know, do have a relatively high dropout rate. It's very difficult, it's gonna be one of the hardest things you've ever done. So I do have to assume that you're interested in this, you're ready for a challenge, and you're someone who is somewhat decent at math, 
um, because you know there is going to be quite a bit of that in mechanical engineering. If you're not good at math or you're not interested in these, um, obviously they wouldn't be in your top 10. So this is just kind of like an objective top 10 list where I assume that you can do it because you can. You know, if you really push yourself, if you're passionate about it, you can do it even if you're not the best at math. And by the way, this is a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Next one on the list, number two, is going to be becoming a radiation therapist. And this is usually an associate level degree. It takes usually about two to three years. And if you become a radiation therapist, you make an absolutely ridiculous $86,000 a year. On top of that, it is growing at a very healthy 9% over the next 10 years. To put that in perspective, the average is about four to 5%. So yeah, if you're somebody who does not wanna do the full four-year bachelor's degree, there are pretty decent options at the associate level. Now, most of them are going to be in health, but there are some options here and there in technology as well as engineering. But yeah, health has fantastic options, especially at the associate level. And health degrees are just good at every single level, whether you're looking at professional degree, doctorate, uh, masters, bachelors, or associates. Next one on the list, number eight is going to be a business degree. And this is gonna be management information systems and it's gonna be at the bachelor's level. So this is basically a combination of technology skills as well as business skills, which is a super, super great combo. It's good right now, and in my opinion, it's only going to get better into the future. So last year, about 7,800 people graduated with a bachelor's in this one. But what's interesting here is check out the amount of job listings that have management information systems degree as a keyword. Over 39,000 job listings with 7,800 graduates. So there is obviously not enough graduates to fill all of those positions that have this as a keyword in their job listing. Another thing to keep in mind is my methodology for doing this is not perfect because it's a lot harder to put management information systems degree in a listing and it's a lot less likely that they put that in there because it's four words. Whereas someone putting like accounting degree or finance degree is much easier. So it's likely even better than this when it comes to the demand. And on top of that, you make about $60,000 a year starting out and 105,000 in mid-career pay. And if that wasn't enough, you will likely get a job in the technology industry, which is probably the best industry to work in when it comes to opportunity, when it comes to benefits, getting stock options, getting bonuses, etc. Not to mention quality of life and job satisfaction. This is also an incredibly flexible degree because you can work for just about any company in a multitude of different roles. Now, I know that I said I didn't factor difficulty into this list, but you know, if you're somebody who is worried about doing engineering or something along those lines, uh, management information systems, I think has a healthy level of difficulty. Definitely one that you should look into. Number seven on the list is going to be a nurse practitioner's master's degree. So you can become a nurse practitioner and get a doctorate that's called DNP. In this particular case, I'm talking about the master's. Nurse practitioner is one of my favorite careers. Uh, you can prescribe, you can diagnose, you can treat patients. You don't have to be under the supervision of a doctor. It's also an extremely flexible career as well. There's so many different directions you can go. You can work your way up, you know, on an administration level in the hospital, become like, you know, the president of a hospital or the CEO of a hospital. Oftentimes you do see nurses in a lot of those high level positions because nurses know hospitals better than pretty much anybody. On top of that, you can seek further education, further certifications if you wanna go down more specialized paths. And one thing that's really cool is you can just get your bachelor's degree in nursing. And then if you want to, you can work. Or if you don't want to, you can go back to school. It's kind of like whatever you feel like doing. Maybe you want to little bit of both. So you get your bachelor's in nursing, your BSN, and then you work for two or three years, then you go back to school and get your master's. And as a nurse practitioner, you will make about $117,000 per year. And the thing that just absolutely pops off the page about this one is 45% for demand. Nurse practitioner is expected to grow 45%. That's actually maybe the highest on this entire list. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like I said before, 
four to 5% is average. So this one is growing like nine to 10 times faster than your average career. Next one on the list is pretty much tied with it and it's going to be the one right before uh, nurse practitioner and that's going to be a nurse, so getting your BSN. About 134,000 people graduated with this one last year, whereas about 28,000 or so graduated with a nurse practitioner master's. The early career pay on this one is going to be $60,000, mid-career pay is about 79,000, and this one has one of the highest demand scores on the entire list, which is 135. On top of that, it also has one of the highest meaning scores at 83%. And meaning does tend to be a very good indicator of your long-term job satisfaction. So yeah, both of those fantastic options for the right people. Uh, nursing is such a flexible degree. There's so many different paths you can go down. If you go down one and you don't like it for whatever reason, it's so easy for you to just switch your specialty into something else. The next one on the list is going to be an electrical engineering bachelor's degree. So this is another degree that's relatively flexible and I really love that about degrees. Because the truth is, even if you have really done your research, you make a fantastic plan, something might pop up in the future where you're like, you know what? I don't really wanna go down that career path. I kinda wanna go down a different one. And if you have a degree that is too specific, that might hinder your ability to be flexible and go in a different direction. Whereas if you have a relatively flexible degree, it's going to be a lot easier to do that. Now last year, about 16,000 people did graduate with this degree at the bachelor level. Early career pay is about 70,000. Mid-career pay is 119,000, which is fantastic. On top of that, the demand score is a very good 109. One thing that's great about electrical engineering is you will likely end up working in the technology industry as well. Now, sometimes you can go down the hardware route, but there's quite a few electrical engineers that also learn how to code and they go more down the software side of things. And electrical engineering is just such a flexible degree that you are gonna have that ability. Next one on the list, number four, is going to be another master's degree. It is going to be becoming a PA or physician assistant, now known as physician associate. So this is an absolutely fantastic degree, somewhat similar to nurse practitioner. You can prescribe, diagnose, treat, etc. You do have to be under the supervision of a doctor though. Now, when it comes to the numbers, you do make slightly less than a nurse practitioner, and there's slightly less demand, but there's a reason that I ranked this one a little bit higher. So you'll make around $115,000 a year, and it's growing at 31%, which is I think the second highest on this list, still absolutely off the charts. But with that being said, it's not as good as the nurse practitioner numbers. So why did I rank this one a little bit higher? Well, there's two main reasons, and I stumbled upon this when I was doing research on it, and I got really, really deep into the research. The first thing is, Physician associate is an even more flexible degree than nurse practitioner. And by that, I mean it's super easy for you to change your specialty. So let's say you are working as a PA and you're doing surgical, right? And for whatever reason, you're tired of doing surgeries. You just don't wanna do it. You don't wanna wake up early in the morning or in the middle of the night. There's just something about surgeries you don't want to do. Instead, you wanna transition over into dermatology. It is very easy for you to do that as a physician associate. You can also do something along those lines as a nurse practitioner, but it's a little bit more difficult. I actually know a physician associate who works in both of those different settings at once, right? So she literally has two different jobs and she works in two different settings at once. You can pair this to a lot of other types of careers out there where it's super hard for you to transition into a different specialty. And then the second thing is there is some preliminary evidence that the way that they're accrediting and the way that they're handing out different degrees as well as giving accreditation to schools for nurse practitioners is going to mean that at some point it's likely going to be saturated. You've seen this happening with other types of health degrees like pharmacy where for whatever reason the accrediting board is just like handing out accreditations left and right and then you see the opposite happening with medical. Uh, for medical schools it's extremely difficult to get accredited. And that's why you see saturation occurring with pharmacy schools, but no saturation occurring with medical. And it seems like it may be going down that direction with nurse practitioner, although not nearly as bad. 
Um, and then PA, it seems like it's going more of the medical direction where they're keeping their standards really high. But again, you know, something could change tomorrow. They could change their mind if they see that it's becoming a little bit too saturated. It's possible the only reason they're doing it is because there's just so much demand and they have to absolutely meet that demand. So that is why I ranked PA a little bit higher. But honestly, these two, both of them are so good, they could pretty much be interchangeable. Next one on the list, number three, is going to be a computer engineering bachelor's. Now, one thing I also want to include is in previous years, I put flexibility as a very, very high ranking, right? So the more flexible a degree was, the better it was. But I realized that it's somewhat unfair for me to put so much weight on flexibility. I have to assume with these rankings that you have done your research and you know what you're getting into, right? So if you hate computers, if you hate math, if you're not good at engineering, don't go into this, right? Uh, you're not gonna enjoy your life. You're not gonna enjoy your work. So this is a relatively specific degree, right? Computer engineering, that's pretty specific. And so you need to make sure that you probably want to work with computers, whether that be software or hardware. But with that being said, last year, about 7,200 people graduated with this degree. Early career pay is 72,000. Mid-career pay is an astounding $120,000 a year. Now, the next one on the list is actually very similar to this one, and you would likely be competing for a lot of the same jobs in many cases, and that is going to be software engineering. Now, the demand score on this one is about 107, which again is very solid, but the next two have absolutely ridiculous demand. So number two on the list is going to be a software engineering bachelor's degree. The demand score for this one is 127. Uh, I think that's like top three out of all of them on this list. You start off making about $69,000 a year and $112,000 in mid-career pay. So very solid salary score, not quite as good as computer engineering, but the reason I ranked this one a little bit higher was the demand. So not only does it have a fantastic demand score, but beyond that, only about a thousand people graduate per year with this degree and there is 77,000 job listings that have software engineering degree as a keyword. Thousand graduates, 77,000 job listings. That is a pretty nice ratio there, 77 to one. But the number one degree on the list is not going to be a surprise for anyone. That is going to be a computer science bachelor's degree. It has an absolutely ridiculous 154 demand score. That's the highest on this entire list. Early career pay is 68,000. Mid career pay is 114,000. So very solid there. On top of that, you're likely going to be working in the technology industry, which has all those perks and benefits that I mentioned before. It's also a very flexible degree. There's so many different things that you can do with it. So yeah, I made an entire video about like most of these degrees, so you can check them out if you want any more information. But interestingly enough, as you saw here, most of the degrees on this list are bachelor level degrees. And that's because in my opinion, they are the best bang for the buck when it comes to your return on investment. I talked about this in several different videos where you know I said like, is it worth it to go to graduate school? I think that was the title of the video. But when you go to graduate school, basically you have to take out a different type of loan. It's called a grad plus loan. And so people who go to graduate school take out a lot more in loans and they have much worse percentages on them, right? So the interest rates sometimes are over seven, eight percent. Whereas undergraduate loans, the interest rates are usually between three and maybe five and a half percent. So it's extremely expensive for you to go to graduate school. It's a lot harder. Sometimes it takes a lot longer as well. And this is especially true when you're talking about doctoral degrees. Now, uh, getting a PhD is almost never going to be worth it from a financial perspective. Only reason for you to do that is non-financial reasons. There are certain professional doctoral level degrees that can be worth it from a financial perspective, absolutely. But the best bang for the buck, in my opinion, most of the time is going to be bachelor level degrees. So what I always recommend is get a bachelor's degree in something that you know you can get a job with, right? And then if you want to pursue graduate school, pursue higher education, you have that option, right? And it's an option for you 
It's not something that you have to do, right? It's not a necessity. That lets you be extremely flexible with your plans. So if you decide you wanna to go to grad school, great, you can do that. But if you decide, you know, I've had enough of school, I'm totally sick of it, I need to get a job, make money right now, you also have that option as well. Check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video, and I will see you next time.